You're listening to The Kelly Track Show. I'm your host, Kelly Track, author, coach, and eternal optimist. Each week, I'll give you lessons to elevate your life, reclaim your personal power, and truly awaken and transform. Your best life starts right now. All right, my friends, welcome back to the show. Thank you as always for tuning in and for listening. This episode today is a really good one. So thank you so much for being here. Now, support for today's episode comes from my friends at Four Sigmatic. So I want to tell you about my newest summer obsession. It is homemade matcha iced teas. Okay, so how do you do this? Step one, get a really cute cup. I like the stemless wine glasses. Shout out to Zan, who drinks water out of stemless wine glasses too. Makes you feel really legit. Uh, Step two, get a bunch of ice. Put it in your pretty cup. Step three, get a really cute straw. I'm looking at ordering some pretty glass ones online. Step four, add a tiny bit of mushroom matcha from Four Sigmatic. Just like a tiny bit. It gets like that really cute spring green color. (laughs) And then you add nice ice cold water to your cup and then voila, a matcha iced tea. It's so good. I'm obsessed with drinking these and I love the Four Sigmatic Mushroom Matcha. It's my fave. It's the only one I like to drink. It's got a bit of ginger in it and some lion's mane, which is really nice. It gives you a little bit of extra brain power. I sometimes drink one too many of these and then I have to like remind myself that this actually has caffeine and that I gotta slow down. So anyways, <laughs> if you want to give this a try, um, oh my God, it'd be so fun if you make this drink and you share it on your Instagram and tag me. I would love to see your like really pretty cup and however cute way you make it. Plus the spring green color is like really Instagram legit. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to give Four Sigmatic a try, you can always use the promo code Kelly track, which is just all one word at checkout for 15% off your order. All right, peeps, I have my drink right here. I am ready to roll. So let's just jump into today's episode. All right, people. So let's talk about this question. What if you let your life be easy? I know it's such a beautiful one. What if you let it be easy? What if you let it be simple? What if you allowed it to flow? So here's the deal. I didn't ever tap into the metric of ease until about a year ago, because for the rest of my life, I was always dipping into the narrative and reiterating the same narrative of, oh, my life is really hard. My plate is super full. I work so hard. I'm a hustler. I can outwork people. That was something I used to think. Like, I was just like, you know what? I might not be the smartest person on the team. I might not be the smartest person in business school, but I will outwork anybody else to be as good as them. Okay. So my dear friend, if you resonate with former me, I would love to share some golden nuggets of wisdom that I've had to seriously put into practice myself. So first and foremost, You got to let go of your ego's attachment. So what does this mean? Our ego, our shadow self, our negative inner critic, our negative self-talk, those are all synonyms. Our ego likes to pick narratives where it can be better than other people. And it quite often likes the narrative and the story of I'm a hard worker. I can outwork anybody else. I am the hardest worker on the team. How about this one? I'm the freaking best person on this team. I'm the hardest worker and everybody else is not as good as me. And my ideas are the best. (laughs) AKA how I felt about all of my group projects in university. Oh my God, group projects, TBT. So if you are really identifying with this narrative, I encourage you to relinquish that narrative. That idea that you're a hard worker and that you are like the person who will stay up late to get it done and that you'll outwork everybody else and that you're on, you're the best on the team because you actually work the hardest. You know, our ego loves that story. And I want to explain why I had to let this story go myself, because here is, here is the deal. What you focus on creates right? Whatever you give your attention to, you get more of in your life. So if you're telling the story that I work really hard, my work is hard, I'm a hard worker, I hustle and grind, 
that is what you get. So when you say I work hard, the, the universe is like, okay, she works hard. Let's give her some hard work. <laughs> now, here's the deal. Let's talk about the difference between working from a space of love and working from a space of fear. If you love what you do and you enjoy doing your work and you feel like you are in alignment when you do work and you are feeling in vibrational alignment with your work, that's working from a space of love. Then there is the more common one of working from the space of fear. Working from that space of fear sounds a lot like the scarcity mindset, right? So there's always two mindsets, abundance or scarcity, right? Love versus fear. And scarcity and fear are like BFFs and they hold hands and they run in the park swinging and holding hands together. So scarcity and fear, they love to say things like, you got to really hustle if you want the boss to like you. You got to vet yourself. You got to prove yourself. You got to earn your stripes at this job. You have to impress the higher ups. If you want that bonus because you need that bonus, because how else are you going to pay for your rent this year? You got to really hustle and grind. People are going to take any opportunities away from you if you don't prove yourself. That person, Shelly on the team, she's looking damn fine right now. And she and I are neck and neck for the promotion. And if I do not work my guts out, I'm not going to get promoted. And if I don't get promoted, I'm a loser. So yes, that is the fear and scarcity story when it comes to work. And we know these answers intuitively. So check in when you feel like work's getting kind of icky and ask yourself, am I working out of love or am I working out of fear? So fear can come in different ways. Sometimes it's like fear of, you know, money and not having enough money. Maybe it's fear of what other people will think of you if you don't work that hard. Maybe it is a fear around not being accepted by your peers who are also super hard workers. And if you say, hey, everybody, it's 6 p.m. and it's time for me to go home and you're worried that they're all going to give you this weird look thinking uh, we all stay here until 10 or midnight. And I don't know who gave you the permission to go home at six. If you're worried about other people's acceptance, sometimes that also feels like working from the space of fear. So I want to go back to this idea of non-attachment. And this is some like ninja level self-development, like Eckhart Tolle sitting on a rock, meditating for like eight hours straight, you know, basically with the most pristine aura and like pretty much a halo. <laughs> so this art of non-attachment is like pretty much everybody has to work on this one, including myself. It's this idea of not attaching yourself to anything, which is like why I said ninja level. Now, the best thing to do and the best place to start is to detach from the negative stories. So the stories of being like a super hard worker like being the person that hits burnout and then takes a holiday. You know, being the person that stays up past midnight to get to inbox zero. If your ego is holding on to those stories and then giving you validation, that's where you want to say, hey, ego, thanks for thinking of me. Great idea. And I'm going to pick another one. So when you feel like that's happening in your life, try asking yourself these questions instead. What if it was easy? What if I picked an easier solution? What if I picked an easier outcome? What if I prioritized my personal well-being first? Which idea or option feels like the easiest and most fun? How could I make this simpler? How could I get somebody else to do this? <laughs> How could I outsource this? How could I eliminate this project altogether if it's not working for me? How could I say no? How could I free up some time? How could I find a solution in a better way? You want to keep asking questions until you find some sort of cool inspired action that flows from the metric of ease. I have this obsession with the word ease. It's one of my favorite words and it's always one of my favorite core desired feelings if you follow Danielle Laporte's work and uh, the desired map. And I love the metric of ease and this idea of having an easy life because I spent most of my life thinking that my life was hard <laughs> and working really hard. And I actually learned about having an easy life from Just Lively and having my own business. So yeah, go figure. Some people, you know, this is why I made Your Conscious Empire because a lot of people have 
weird narratives around what businesses mean and how your business should look. One of the main driving metrics of success for Kelly Track International Incorporated, that's my business name, <laughs> and for this company is the metric of ease. How easy can I make my life? <laughs> I know it's like, I feel like the freaking genius. I talk about this in depth in a ton in your conscious empire for those of you that are students or you have enrolled. So I encourage you to just ask yourself, well, what if I made ease part of my own practices? What if I looked at the metric of ease? What if I made my life simpler? Just open yourself up to that possibility because sometimes we don't know if there's an easier answer or an easier solution unless we ask. We get really caught up and maybe you feel like this too where you're so caught up in doing things in a certain way. You do things like they've always been done. You use the same software. You use the same programs. You use the same mindset. You use the same actions, habits, patterns, and thoughts. And you get this difficult and hard uphill upstream result. This is where you want to break free from that by changing your mindset and asking more empowering questions of how could I make this easy? What would this be like if it was easy? Is there something I'm not seeing here? Could I make this easy somehow? Is there anything else I could think of? And when you just ask those questions, it's like you're inviting the universe in and the universe can support you a lot better being like, I'm going to send you this person that you're going to bump into. And you guys are going to talk about that new cool software that makes your life actually easy. You know what? I'm going to give her this inspired action to do this project instead. Or I'm going to give her this inspired action to go call that person. And that person's actually looking for work. And you could definitely hire that person as an accountant. When you ask the right questions, you get better results. Because you know, when we ask different questions, we get different outcomes. And that's the beauty of this. And that's the beauty of the mindset work. Because if you don't like the narrative that you've been telling, if you don't like the stories in your head, if you don't like the thoughts you've been thinking, you just get to pick new ones. Just get to pick on a new belief system and you got to change the way you think. And it's actually very simple. I made a whole course for you about it. It's called Your Best Life. <laughs> You're welcome to check it out if it calls your name. And you just have to pick a new narrative. And if you feel like hustle and hard work and the grind has sort of been your jam lately and you've been working from a place of fear, dip in and see, hmm, could I make this easier? Because there are a couple types of ease. I talk about the two types of ease in your best life. And I, I am obsessed because, you know, we always think of ease in a weird way. Especially in societal terms, you know, we always think, oh, if it's easy, then it's not going to be very good. We think of it being easy, like fast food easy, right? That's easy. It's like a drive through meal versus making your own nourishing meal at home. You know, easy and what's easy and what's right is <laughs> it's the right choice. Like, the stuff that's easy, that's based out of love, like, how about this one? Oh, yeah, I'm good at doing web design. I could do web design freelance work. That's easy for me. That comes naturally to me. Yeah, I could do that. That, my friends, is where you want to spend your time in that metric of ease. The good kind of easy, the right kind of easy. The stuff that is like, oh, yeah, intuitive, duh. <laughs> Sometimes we get so caught up in the narrative of like, oh, easy is bad, like drive through food when I should be making a different meal instead, that we forget that easy is good and that a lot of people are living their life with the metric of ease. I pretty much didn't know that people were living easy lives until I flowed into Jess Lavely's work, who's been like one of my biggest teachers. And I had, I had no clue because I just thought people just worked hard and hustled all the time because that was a story I learned growing up. That was what I was taught in school, what, you know, traditional schooling teaches you. And it's so normal because that's like what you see in the media too. So allow yourself to be open to other ways of doing things, Right. One of my favorite things that I've repeated a million times <laughs> is, you know, if you want a different life, you got to do different things, think different thoughts and take different actions. Because if you've been doing it the way you've always done it, get the same result, right? If you've been working hard, 
This is not a time to work even harder to make your life easier. If you want to make your life easier, you're going to have to redo things. It's going to be, got to be different. It's going to be like super different. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck with the same result. Because when I started learning about the practice of ease and making my life easy, um, I think I was still working really hard. <laughs> I didn't really get it until I spent time, you know, refining what easy meant to me and what easy feels like and the good kind of easy and tapping into that. And when you get results from the good kind of easy, then pretty much you're just riding the rocket ship. You're like, whoa, my life can be easy. And I got an awesome outcome from having an easy journey. <laughs> what is this? This is the best thing ever. So, okay, this is the, where the fun and the magic happens. So how exactly do you have an easier life or an easier business or do easier things? It first starts by letting go of your ego's attachment to being a hard worker, which I understand is kind of difficult at the start. And for me, it was really difficult. It feels really good to let that one go. So if you feel like you want to let that one go, do something. You know, I talk about closing ceremonies uh, in your best life. So you can totally have a closing ceremony and close that belief out. I also encourage you to tap into other areas of your life where things are easy and they are awesome as a way in which you can prove it to yourself that the method of ease actually works. So find an area in your life where you're getting a lot of awesome joy and flow and bliss and alignment and it feels really good and then ask yourself is this easy chances are it probably is so say you are really excellent at going to yin yoga once a week and you love yin yoga you just take yourself there it's not this like battle between you and your ego like oh i have to go to yoga you very easily go to yoga every week so that is a way in which you're doing stuff with ease and you're getting awesome results because of it. Maybe your relationship is really easy. Maybe it just sort of came into your life. It flowed your way and it's really easy and it's awesome. Allow yourself to give yourself kudos for that. Maybe your career is really easy and fun and you have a lot of fun at work and you enjoy it and cool stuff keeps happening. Like you just got that sweet new client or you just got promoted or, you know, you got offered to go on that sweet work trip to Germany and you're like, I'm just having fun and allowing it to be easy and I'm getting sweet results. Yeah, that is the magic of ease. Or perhaps you have your own business and you're just having fun. You're doing your work with your clients and then your clients send you referrals. You're like, sweet. That was easy. I just had fun. I just enjoyed the process. I just did what I loved. The metric of ease is the sweetest one of all. It really is. And when you can start harnessing ease in your life, that's when the magic really starts working. Now, one of my favorite pieces from Abraham Hicks is this concept of giving up your oars. So I flowed into this video from Abraham online and they were talking about going with your, with your desires. They always talk about going in the flow of the river, right? What you want is in the flow. And if you are paddling in your in your raft, it's all about going downstream and going with what's easy versus trying to seriously paddle upstream and go against the current. Because what's easy and what's meant for you and what's right for you is downstream. It's easy. It's flow. I am obsessed with this. So giving up your oars means allowing yourself to be in the raft, go downstream, and not have any freaking goddamn oars. Okay, so as a person who used to work super hard, and I would also define myself as a person who enjoys, I work from love a lot now because I adore my work. But, you know, this idea of giving up my oars like freaked me out a little bit. I'm like, what? I need those. Like, Abraham, I can't give up my oars. I need my oars. They've given me so much success and results in the past. Like, I'm, I'm too scared to give up my oars. Esther and Jerry and Abraham, they always talk about this concept of giving up your oars. And this is my favorite thing that I've learned from Abraham. My favorite out of everything ever. Give up your oars. Give up your oars. Allow it to be easy. Surrender. Let go. 
stop freaking trying so hard i don't think abraham said don't stop freaking trying so hard but that's what kelly track says <laughs> it's true you can give up your oars you can stop trying so hard you can have a simpler life you can let things flow when i sometimes hit a point of frustration and when i feel myself going uphill or upstream or trying to default into the old ways of doing things aka working hard from fear I literally throw out my oars. I literally visualize myself throwing out my oars. And I'm not like, you know, sitting at my desk and just sort of like flicking a little oar to the side. I'm like, oh, haha, see ya oar. I stand up in the middle of my hallway and I freaking throw it as if I am throwing a serious oar that weighs like five pounds. And I just like chuck it into the air. And I'm like, have it, have it, Abraham. Have my oar. I don't want it. Like, fuck it. Screw it. I'm so fucking done with this shit. Like, it's yours. And I, like, literally surrender it up. I, um, like, that's when I hit the point where it's, like, I'm giving up all my resistance. And part of manifestation requires giving up your resistance, right? It's, like, giving up that bit. So if you feel like you gotta release something, stand up. Don't do it at your desk. Don't be like, oh, like flick it off your desk as if it's a speck of a crumb of a chocolate chip cookie being like, oh, goodbye, or I don't need you. Stand up, put your two, fe- two feet on the ground. Seriously, visualize yourself picking up like a five pound oar, right? It's an oar that you're going to be using in your whitewater raft. It's pretty heavy. Now literally fling it and give up your oar and just throw it all out there with all the energy in the world and just release it all. If this practice and this idea speaks to you, I encourage you to do it. It feels so liberating. It feels so good. And it's such a great way to just surrender and let go. And letting go of the way in which you've been doing it, like with your hands and really grinding it out in this really manual way. And when you let it go and you're like, hey, Jesus, take the wheel. I've surrendered this up the divine, you're in charge now. That's when you start getting better answers. That's when you start getting better solutions. That's when what's meant for you will come to you because you're not trying to do it out of the space of your like, you know, as Jess Lively calls it, like your beta brain, right? It's doing it out of the space of of like, of what you can physically control with your hands. It's a way in which you are actually releasing and letting go and being open to what the universe wants to send you. You know, the universe wants to make your life easy, right? The universe did not put you on planet Earth so you could suffer and die and have a really lame life where you're only eating canned soup every night. (laughs) The universe wants you to have a good life. The universe wants you to be abundant. The universe wants you to have fun. The universe wants you to enjoy your divine blessings on Earth. It did not send you here so you could suffer and work really hard and like grind it out till midnight every night i feel like the universe is would be just sitting there especially former kelly track the universe is like girl when you gotta figure this shit out (laughs) i feel like it was just waiting be like god i've been trying to help you you're not accepting anything like why i i've sent you so many opportunities to make your life easy why are you not taking any of these it's um there's always that joke of that guy and he his he's in a he's in a flood and it's it's flooding and the water's rising and then he's like okay god's going to save me and then somebody comes by with a boat and says like hey michael like jump in and he's like no it's okay god's going to save me and the guy in the boat's like okay whatever and then the like helicopter comes by and drops down a line and it's like michael here please grab the line like please come on up it's a flood we have to save you he's like no it's okay God, it's going to save me. And then he gets to heaven and he's like, God, I thought you were going to save me. And he was like, I tried. (laughs) I tried. I sent you the boat. I sent you the helicopter and you projected it. So this is what I want to illustrate to you with this idea of letting it be easy. Because when you allow yourself to take on the perspective of ease, you start realizing, oh, that boat is for me. Oh, the helicopter, that's for me. These are my way out. These are my options. These are the better options than me uh, swimming to safety. Oh, sometimes we can't see that unless we give up the resistance and we give up the freaking goddamn oars. 
I mean, you know, you could use those oars to swim to safety, or you could literally just hop in the boat and just go right off. You go way faster, and it's a lot easier if someone else is driving the boat. And hey, somebody might come up with a nice yacht and, you know, a hot tub in the back. And you're like, whew, this is a lot better than paddling for like six hours <laughs> with these oars. You're like, yeah, I'm going to slip into the hot tub. Cool. Can you pour me a cold one? That's what it's like when you dip into ease. So allow yourself to even think of the possibility that your life could be easy because it's a lot more fun when you let it be easy. Now, one of the ways in which I've made my life easy is through my business. So I teach in your conscious empire, this idea that I want my business to feel like an exhale. Yeah. I love that. I freaking love that because former Kelly Jack would have been like, I got to work so hard. My life has to be difficult. I got to really grind it out, blah, 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 and all that crap. If my business does not feel like an exhale, I'm doing something wrong. I know. Whew. This is like some new age stuff for myself. So also give yourself credit for how far you've come. Like I give myself credit for the fact that I even have this as a metric in my business because like I said, former Kelly track, if like high school version of me met me now, she'd be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and I would look at her and be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> So give yourself some credit. You have come so far. The fact that you're even listening to a podcast talking about how easy your life could be, give yourself a pat on the back. Like, for the love of God, please give yourself some credit, some kudos. You're doing way better than you think. Now, this is such a beautiful idea to have a business that's easy, to create something that's easy and simple and not like the ways in which the media portrays it or the ways in which you learned, but to let it be simple and easy. If you want an easy business, entertain the thought that your business could be easy. I love to ask that question. Even now, I'm like, oh, how could I make my life easier? It's a really great possibility to lean into. So if you need assistance and support and guidance on how to build a business that really grooves with your soul and that feels really aligned and juicy and easy, I super deep dive into everything from start to finish on how to build a heart-centered business, how to do what you adore, and how to free yourself financially in your conscious empire, which is officially open for enrollment. So yeah, you're welcome to go check it out if it speaks and calls to you and you can just literally hop in right away because it's all there for you. So this idea of ease is one of my favorite things that I teach in this course because business was one of those things where I had so many preconceived notions about what it had to be like. And a huge module is all about, you know, programming your mindset for success. That's the first module right out of the gate in your conscious empire, because for starters, A, I'm going to be teaching you how to really master your mindset and that fear and that doubt and that worry and those fears like I'm not good enough, smart enough, talented enough. It's already been done before. I don't have the experience yet. I need to still take a couple more classes and then I'll be ready. You'll learn to get all that stuff together so you can actually go out of the gate now because you are way more ready than you think. And another piece I share is this idea of programming your business mindset and seeing what your business mindset is because so many people have these really bad notions around a business of business has to be hard. Business means you're selling your soul. Business means you are a terrible person. Business people are just cold, hard capitalists. And I talk about this idea that, you know, it's, it's the same thing and the example of what you focus on creates. So you could potentially be super blocking yourself if you have this thing around, oh, businesses are bad, but you have a secret desire to start a business. You got to let that stuff go. Yes, of course, there are people out there who are not rocking the conscious empires. <laughs> I totally get that. But for you, my dear friend, you so can and you so are. And I don't want to let any kind of weird mindset crap prevent you from getting started and from going forward. So part of that module means reprogramming your narrative around what business means to you. Like everything, because usually when we think of business, like the first visual that comes into my head is a briefcase, like a brown briefcase. Because that's what society teaches us. Well, what if when you thought of business, you thought of ease, pleasure, joy, fun, magic, and play? 
Uh, I did not learn that one in business school. <laughs> so if you want to rewrite your business mindset and your story around business and totally program your own personal mindset for success, that is all tucked in there for you in your conscious empire. So one more thing I want to add here before we wrap up. Sometimes the universe gives us things that are actually easy and they're opportunities, but they're in another form. So this is one of the favorite things that the universe loves to give us humans. So say, for example, you are desiring more ease in your life or more money in your life or more relationships in your life or whatever you are desiring. You might be like, so I want more ease. And then we think in our heads, okay, this means like four weeks of vacation. Holla. And the universe is like, I'm going to send her a course. I'm going to send her a book. Oh, she's going to bump into that person at the grocery store. And oh yeah, that idea is going to flow her way. Or you know what? That person's in town. She should go to that person's event. Sometimes what we desire comes in another form. And just because it doesn't look like what you thought, it doesn't mean it's not an opportunity. So be on the lookout for things that light your spark. That's all you have to go in with. If something is sparking your interest, or if you feel a magnetic pull to something, or you're curious about it, or you can't get it out of your head, ask yourself, is this an inspired action? Like tune into your body and ask yourself, is this a heck yes? Is this like a whole body amen? Like, does my intuition align with this? What does it feel like? And if you're getting the yes vibes, you should go because sometimes that just leads on to the next thing and takes you where you want to go. This could be like, honestly, working with a coach, hire me, hire somebody else. This could be like enrolling in a course. This could be a book. It could be a person. This could be having the inspired action to go call your mother. Honestly, opportunities always come in different forms. So be on the lookout for cool stuff that flows your way. So my friends, on that note, this is where I'm going to wrap it up for you today. So in a quick summary, make your life be easy. Allow yourself to ask the question, what if my life was easy? Dabble in that narrative. Do your best to let go of your attachment to your ego's definition of hard work and hustle. Just tell your ego it can take a hike for a while and you're just going to try the metric of ease for a week just to see. (laughs) The ego is a lot happy when you a lot happier when you do that, okay? So give it a go. See, see how it could be. Ask yourself for one week about the questions of ease and dabble into that narrative and see how far you get with the ease and the metric of ease. Cause I have a feeling it's gonna take you to even better and higher places than you could have ever imagined. So if you are starting a business or if you have an idea or you already have a business and you're ready to take it to the next level, something I've mentioned today in this episode is your conscious empire. So this is my online self-study class. It is brand spanking new and it's officially open for enrollment. So this course is designed to teach you how to build a digital business from scratch as in you working by yourself with whatever time you have. Yep. Even if that's just like a couple hours a week, or you still have a full job or you're starting out and you actually have all the time in the world, it meets you where you're at. It's all about how you can build your own heart centered business, do what you adore and actually truly for yourself financially. So this course guides you through everything from the basic beginning of the mindset work before you start cleaning up that mindset the art of inspired action and energy, how exactly you raise your vibration, how to build a business that actually grooves with your soul that's tailored to your zone of genius and something you can truly craft single-handedly. You'll learn all about the Silicon Valley approach, which is how to test and validate your ideas before you start making a single thing. (laughs) You'll learn about products and pricing with intention and Get clear on what you're crafting so you can actually build something that's truly profitable and also how to correctly price your gorgeous work. You'll also learn about heart-centered marketing and connection, how to build your platform, master that art of attraction versus promotion. And this, my friends, is one of my favorite things. It's how you get people to come to you versus going out there and getting them yourself. This has to do a ton with law of attraction and it's super fun. Also, you'll learn how to build a loyal tribe with love and really create that dedicated tribe of true and dedicated fans. You'll learn all about high vibe communication that sells and serves your audience at the same time. 
You'll learn how to build a gorgeous website that sells itself, how to make conscious cash with integrity, how to actually generate income, like seriously leverage your time. You'll learn about passive income, the wealth mindset, how to get into the energetic vibration of money. Guys, I had the best time making this module for you. It's going to blow you out of the water. Plus you get the pitching and selling manifesto, which is all about the new way of business and pitching and selling in a way that's not gross and sleazy. You'll also learn how to elevate to the next level, how to really grow your empire, use these high-end mindset strategies I teach you, and the last module of faith, trust, and true devotion. So how to build that rock-solid faith in yourself and learn the mindset tools to really develop unwavering trust. So these are the 13 modules. You get 18 hours of video. You get four books, which have a total of about 150 pages. This course goes in extreme detail and it is designed to guide you step by step and it's something that you can self-study it is totally digital so you enroll at any time and it's all like pause and play it's designed so that you can go learn and then implement into your business right away and it's perfect for anybody who's seriously at any point in their entrepreneurial journey if you're brand spanking new if you have a rough idea, if you have no ideas, I'll even teach you where exactly you should get ideas to start a business and how exactly you can do that. Even if you are really early on, if you're just one or two years in and you want to really grow and you haven't been happy with the success you've had so far, it's super, super detailed for you. It's all in there. I've literally given you everything I know. It's copy paste from my brain to yours. So if your conscious empire speaks to you and if it calls to you, the link is in the show notes for you to explore more. And if you are getting that spidey sense tingly, oh my God, yes, I should look at this, go explore and check it out. And if it calls your name and if it speaks to you and if your intuition is guiding you towards it, allow yourself to lean into what's easy, say yes and go for it. So my friends, that is a show for you today. Thank you as always for tuning in and for listening. I hope you love this episode and until next time, I'll catch you back here soon. All right, bye. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening today. If you love this episode, please take a second to share it with somebody that you know needs to hear this message. And if you feel so called and so moved, please write an honest review of what you think about this podcast in iTunes and leave me some stars. That would truly help me out on my journey to helping millions and millions of people. And until next time, have a lovely day and I'm so excited to see you back here soon.